Hi, this is Kelly from Hills Deals and Wheels Mobile Home Investing Course, and today we have a very seasoned investor. This is Terry Johnson. Terry, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for having me on, uh, Kelly. I, I, I sincerely appreciate it. You've been a big help uh, for me and, and the deals I've been able to do. My name is Terry Johnson. I live out here in Delaware slash Maryland area, and i um, re retired uh, uh, Army uh, veteran. And um, uh, got a family and I'm over home invest. Okay. I don't know if that was a uh, deep okay. enough, but that's what I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Terry, thank you so much for your service. You know, I'm retired as well. I didn't know you were retired. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm medically retired. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. And so you do business where? I do business in uh, typically, I guess what someone referred to as a tri-state area. So I do business in Delaware, Maryland, Jersey, and Pennsylvania, because that's close to where I live. Okay. And so how do you go about closing deals in those, in those states? Is it the same or is there some type of difference? Well, as far as closing, uh, they're all the same. I mean, I mean, you know as well as I do, typically it's, it's not really a, a close like it would be like with a mortgage company. You just go to the DMV and you, you, you pretty much close on the deal, transfer uh, uh, the title when the time comes. Uh, but I hold title until uh, until they're finished paying off uh, the, the personal property. Okay. All right. And so uh -huh. could you give us a rundown of any of your deals and the return on the investment? The return on investment. Uh, so I don't have a percentage on this uh, last one that we just did, but I can give you the the raw numbers on it. I, I guess I maybe I should have calculated. I just don't have it in front of me. That's okay. Um, I do all my deals rent to own uh, or owner finance. So that's the particular strategy that I enjoy. I haven't done any other uh, deals just yet besides this particular strategy. So we'll buy it, we'll fix it up, and then we'll put a tenant buyer in it for about a five or six year term. So this particular last uh, one that we did about a month ago, uh, I got that one for five hundred dollars. That's how much we purchased it for. Wow. We put about I want to say maybe six into it, and when it's all said and done, at the end of the five-year term, it's going to be about forty-six thousand uh, dollars. Wow. So forty-six minus what we put in. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be like way over a hundred percent return on your investment. <laughs> That is definitely well over a 100% ROI for sure, Kelly. And if you recall, I actually, uh, I hit you up and I asked you, I was like, hey, listen, um, uh, how exactly were we, uh, you know, should we structure this? Because the interest doesn't seem right. And you let me know that everything was all, all good. So I went ahead and moved forward with it. They signed the paperwork. They had it for 24 hours and came back after they reviewed it and said, yeah, let's move forward. So we went ahead and made the deal happen. Wow. I'm, I'm glad. And I, I appreciate have... your wisdom. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, Terry, so how long have you been in the mobile home business and are you licensed? Okay, so I'll, I'll answer that in reverse. No, I am not licensed. It's something I'm I'm considering to do. I just haven't done it yet. How long have I been doing this? I'm still a novice. You know, I only have three deals under my belt. It's been a little less than a year uh, since I started. And I'm really excited about this industry, uh, you know, making sure I surround myself with people who are way more knowledgeable about this industry than, uh, than I am, hence me talking to you right now okay. uh, in, in our relationship. Okay. So um, that's the extent of my knowledge, a little less than a year and on my third deal, okay. working on my fourth deal right now. Okay. So Terry, would you say it's a must to be licensed or is that just something that you want to do? That's a really hard question. Every, everyone that I've spoken to that is way more knowledgeable than I am says that it's a good idea to go ahead and get licensed. It's it's a path that I haven't taken yet. Um, I don't even really know what the holdup is. I guess just busy with some of the other things that I do, but I fully intend on doing it. Uh, is it a must to be like, do you have to get licensed to get started? The answer is no. So if someone was looking at this and said, well, I want to get started, but I don't have the money to get a license yet. Uh, in my humble opinion, in my humble novice opinion, you don't need to be licensed to get started. Should it, could it be something you should look into in the future? Uh, sure. You know, and, and do I intend on doing it? Yes. Wow. Okay. All right. And so you just say you don't need to be licensed. So what is your favorite strategy? Are you like a buy and hold or you wholesale or what do you do? I am a buy and hold all day, Kelly. I like cash flow. I have some other businesses, so you know, cash flow is is uh, as far as the need for an in, in immediate income uh, isn't necessarily a stressor of mine. So the buy and hold, 
uh, and having, you know, increasing my monthly cash flow, that's what I'm all about. So I'll hold for five years, six years, as long as I've got that positive cash flow coming in, Kelly, I'm good. I love the buy and hold strategy. Okay. But have you done any wholesale deals? Or it, no, okay. not, from, from a, not from, hold on, let me, uh, let me, sure. let me, let me uh, backtrack a little sure. bit. Sure. Um, buying and holding as far as uh, holding it for and selling it on a note is what I mean. I don't have any rentals long term as far as buying and holding, if that's what you're referring to. Oh, I don't okay. have any rentals. Okay. I, everything I have, I'm selling, but I'm selling it by holding a note. Okay. All right. Okay. And so do, have you done any wholesale deals at all or just buying and holding? I have only done this buy and hold and strategy i haven't done no wholesales i haven't done a quick turn i haven't done anything uh and all of the properties that i have sold are in parks i haven't done anything on land just yet okay and can you just give us a little walkthrough on how you go about finding these mobile homes how you talk about how you go about talking to the park manager Sure. Um, which one do you want me to tackle first? Uh, what I say or not what I say, but how do I talk to the park manager or how I go about finding the deal? Uh, how you go about finding the deals? Great. Let's start there. So uh, my favorite strategy by far, it, as far as many greater return on my investment, has been a road sign. I say road sign. I hear some people say bandit signs. I, I literally, I drive for dollars in the neighborhoods. I have a little flyer that I put on the abandoned, uh, um, we call them bandos up in my uh, neck of the woods, on the abandoned properties. Uh, and, you know, either uh, residents in the neighborhood will call, and then we put a sign on the outside of the neighborhood, not on their property, but on the outside of the neighborhood and then the grocery stores or high traffic areas nearby. And then people call us and we'll structure, or that's how we find our off-market deals. Um, that has been the best strategy that I've used so far. I'm sure there's a ton of other great things to do. I haven't dug into them yet. Nothing online that I've done. I've just used that low tech strategy and that seems to have been working for me so far. I am very interested in, you know, exploring other marketing methods to find some off, off, uh, off market deals, but that's what I've been doing so far. As far as the park managers, um, I, that was an initially a little bit intimidating. I didn't know exactly how to formulate the words just right. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I've done sales before. So I said, you know what, uh, let's just do it. I, I called, I introduced myself, I, I, I told them my name and what I was looking to do. I actually had a few parks that we don't allow any investors in here. And that's fine. Uh, I just I kept calling until I found some that said, okay, I looked at some of their properties. And so far, I haven't purchased a property off of a park just yet. The three deals that I have, oh, excuse me, this last deal uh -huh. that I'm working on is actually in a park. But the three I did prior all came from off-market deals that people called me on their on our, on my marketing methods. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, so this th that you were explaining how you go about finding deals, and you said you use the bandit size. Now, are bandit size illegal where you where you are? I'm, I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, I, I haven't found anywhere where bandit signs are legal. Okay. Um, I, you know, just, just to be upfront transparent with you, uh, what's the word I want to use? Um, I put them out at night and I leave them there. I know some people go and pick them back up. I leave them there. I've only had one person call me uh, saying that I need to come get the sign. And that was, uh, you know, when I was doing some other things. Uh, it was actually in their, their neighborhood. I, it, it was like next to a Chili's and it was, uh, someone that, uh, head of the HOA or something like that. And they asked me politely, nothing rude or anything like that. And I just went and grabbed the sign, but I haven't had any law enforcement call me or anything like that. Um, no one's asked me if I had a permit. I see the signs are gone. So I know that, you know, people are taking them up. Um, but no one's ever called me and, you know, said, I need to come move them or else there's going to be a fine. Um, except for this woman in the neighborhood, but she was just very polite and asked, could I come get the sign? There was no, uh, you know, no threat of calling law enforcement if I didn't come. I, I, she was simply just going to throw it away. But since she called me, I said, let me just go pick it up. So, I, again, I haven't found anywhere where bandit signs are exactly legal. I just don't put them on anyone's personal property. But I know that the, the your local governments or uh, townships really don't like them. They look at them as an eyesore, especially if they sit there and kind of get raggedy. But uh, the road crew or, uh, you know, somebody that uh, just doesn't want to have them there will come pick up your sign. So expect to lose them. But no, I, I haven't um, seen anywhere where they're exactly, you know, uh, 
townships don't like them, I guess, the long and short. Right. Yeah, that's why I don't use bandit signs. I usually do my business cards and call it a day. So, mm -hmm. so Terry, where do you find yourself like five years from now in this mobile home business? What, what do you, what do, you, what do you see yourself doing? So I'm, I'm glad you asked, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Five years from now, I would like to have, uh, I would like to have some mobile homes on land. That's the direction that, from everything that I've been researching. I really want to move into mobile homes on land. Uh, initially, uh, Kelly, I was looking into possibly getting into some stick-built homes and, you know, uh, you know, flipping those, but. After I've gotten into this manufactured slash mobile home, uh, you know, industry, digging into it and learning as much as I can, mobile homes or manufactured homes on land is definitely the direction that I want to move into. And I'm looking within five years to have at least 20 to 30 uh, rentals. And when you say buy and hold, that's what I'm looking at as buying and hold. I don't want to sell those. I want to have those and leave a legacy for uh, my family, among some other things that I'm doing. But mobile homes, that's where I'd like to see myself having a, uh, that many properties on land. Okay. And so Terry, so you like it on land versus being in a park because of what reason? I want to own it. I don't want to deal with the park uh, managers. Uh, I, I want to have something. Uh, I want to own the actual structure and the land uh, underneath it. So, you know, if uh, something ever happens, I could just pull that off and put another property there or um, or, or what have you. And again, uh, Kelly, I'm still very uh, wet behind the ears. I'm, I'm definitely a novice. I'm learning everything I can. But to have it on land and be able to rent um, versus being in the park, all the parks that I've been in so far uh, won't allow me to rent and I don't want to have to deal with, I look at that and deem that as a headache. I want to have more control and having on land when it turns into technically real estate that I can buy and hold forever and ever is more appealing to me and just makes more sense uh, from a cost benefit analysis. Okay. And so do you have any words of okay. wisdom uh, for somebody who's new to the business? Yes, absolutely. Uh, reach out. Well, what, words of wisdom to anyone in the business, generally speaking, or anyone uh, part of uh, this community that you and I are part of? Uh, just generally speaking. Generally speaking, uh, learn everything you can and find a mentor. Find a mentor, learn everything you can, ask lots of questions. Uh, don't quit because you may not get your first deal right away. It, it took me a couple of months to get our first deal. And um, that's about it. Don't don't listen to the naysayers. Uh, I had qu quite a few of those, uh, some real estate, uh, I'm not going to call them uh, buddies, but real estate people I know tell me that this was a waste of time. And um, I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Don't even focus on it. More for me. You're, let this be a waste of time. Don't even worry about it. I'll go ahead and hang on to these, these mobile homes. So uh, don't let anybody tell you that you can't. Again, find a mentor and make sure you ask lots of questions and learn everything you possibly can. Lastly, I'll leave you with this. Don't have analysis paralysis. I've spoken to quite a few people that want to get into mobile homes and they keep telling me, I've been looking, I've been researching, I've been looking. I was like, well, eventually you're going to have to go ahead and jump in because you can't learn how to swim until you get wet. So go ahead and jump in, find a mentor and get started. You know, right. Don't get analysis paralysis. Right. I mean, that's a great point. That's an excellent point. So, Terry, before I go, I have one more question for you. How would somebody be able to reach oh, out sure. to you if they have any questions? Do you have a website or a company or, or, or email or phone number? I don't mind to give my phone number and my regular email. That's fine. You can call me direct at 302-690-7111. That's my phone number. And my regular email address that I use is ibuildleaders at gmail.com. Okay. All right, Terry, thank you so much for your time. Uh -huh. And thank you. Oh, you got a visitor back there. Hello. Good morning. I, oh, <laughs> that was my wife. Here. That's she okay. just came in. <laughs> That's okay. No, uh, not, thank listen, you. I want to say this. I want to say this before you let me go, Kelly. Sure. I really appreciate all of your mentorship and you being available to answer all these questions that I have. So if you guys are, are looking into learning how to do this, uh, you won't find a better mentor or somebody that's uh, kind of walk you and guide you down this path than Kelly. So grab hold of her coattails and listen to everything she has to say. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Kelly. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Terry. I appreciate that. Thank you.